This report is not about me, but about a 16-year-old patient I took care of in an intensive care unit. History that I obtained from the patient's family started with the boy's father coming home from work and seeing his son sitting on the couch watching a TV that wasn't on and talking to a friend that wasn't there. Dad said what the hell are you doing, he isn't even here. At this point his son looked around the room and had what his father said was his last moment of clarity. He said Dad, I'm really fucked up. Dad figured that the boy had taken LSD and sent the boy to his room to trip. Dad found a pot on the stove that had some burnt material in and the pot had boiled dry and was smoking. Within 15 minutes of getting home, the father heard his son screaming at the top of his lungs like a girl and then the sound of breaking glass as the boy slammed his computer chair into his window. At some point, Dad decides that this isn't your regular bad trip and drives the boy to our hospital. When he came in, his heart rate was 178. We pushed drugs to slow his heart rate down. His pupils were dilated to 7 mm. He was screaming and thrashing around. We had to call in four of our security officers to do a use of force and place the boy in four-point restraints, where a patient is strapped to a bed by their wrists and ankles. The patient was writhing so hard on the bed that he was arching his back and coming up off the bed. It was an awful lot like the scene from The Exorcist. Everyone panics and we can't give the patient something to safely sedate him until you have some idea what he's on. His father called in the family and a friend of the patient, who had some idea what the boy had taken. He told us that his friend had read about gypsum weed on the internet and had made a tea out of it to get high. Due to the nature of the plant and how he took it, it is impossible for us to say how much he took. There was really nothing we could do for this boy to help him while he was in the ICU. These hallucinations are not like the ones users get on LSD or other drugs. They cannot differentiate between the trip and the reality. They have completely overridden the brain's bullshit filters. When the boy woke on the third day of his stay with us, his family had been through turmoil and he was unable to walk or eat for another two days. At discharge, his total bill was over $140,000 for the skilled care that he had required. He was embarrassed, physically and mentally weakened, and had mandatory chemical dependency treatment, and a severe chewing out by his dad, to look forward to. I can say I'll probably always be able to recognize a Datura patient if I ever see another one. I am writing this report the day after having ingested Datura Anoxia, Metelloid, Angel's Trumpet, Seeds with Diphenhydramine, Benadryl. My background and body. 17-year-old student. 160 pounds. 6 foot tall. Athletic. Diagnosed with asthma and depression. Had a full stomach during ingestion. My daily medications. Prozac, 20 mg, daily. Mental state prior to ingestion. Calm, relaxed, normal. At home, family was there watching a movie. Preparation and ingestion. I first put the seeds into a small glass bowl with a small amount of hot water. This technique coaxes the seeds to expand and become softer for chewing. After waiting for a minute, I added pure lime juice, about 6 drops, in order to further weaken the shells of the seeds. After mixing in the lime juice, I vigorously crushed the seeds with a metal spoon and poured them into a cup of orange juice, stirred, and then swallowed all at once. About 30 minutes later I decided to ingest another anti-cholinergic chemical called diphenhydramine, Benadryl. I swallowed 9 pills, 25 mg each, that's 225 mg. Experience Report 1-2 to two hours after ingestion. Felt nothing for the first hour, then I got a tingling sensation in my fingers and toes, vision got slightly blurred and objects had very subtle light trails. Walking got a bit more difficult after this first hour. 2-3 to three hours after ingestion. It was a school night so I went to sleep, felt lightheaded, a bit nauseous, pretty tired. 3-8 to eight hours after ingestion. Slept through the night without any real memorable dreams. Woke up at one point and was hot, my legs felt restless and my skin was a bit itchy. Some noticeable cotton mouth occurred and I felt a bit weak. Next day at school. Woke up and took a shower, my arms felt like they were a foot longer than normal. Imagine your eyes being located near the back of your skull for a wider angle POV. Felt much lighter weight than normal. Anxiety set in and I felt really stupid for having taken these drugs last night. Driving to school felt very strange, the slightest bit of acceleration in my car felt like going down very fast in a roller coaster, made me giggle because of the tickling in my stomach. Arrow would note, driving while intoxicated, tripping, or extremely sleep deprived is dangerous and irresponsible because it endangers other people. Don't do it, still very dry everywhere on my body. 
cottonmouth lasted until the end of the school day. I got a bit of a feeling like I was going to vomit during my second class of the day and drove home for about 30 minutes, did not throw up, and urinating made me feel quite a bit better. I went back to school for the end of the third class in my day. Still felt rather weak and very tired, as well as having cotton mouth. For the rest of the day, my hand-eye coordination improved over the hours until by the time school was out I felt pretty much normal again. There weren't really any hallucinations besides some very minor light flashes and almost invisible wavy patterns in my vision that would go away quickly. Conclusion. It wasn't fun, it was very uncomfortable, there weren't really any hallucinations, and it brought on a lot of anxiety. I wouldn't recommend this plan to anyone, it's very strong, but very dangerous too. I am awoken promptly at 10.30 am by my best friend who asks me if I want to try out this deterrent tea that he made that morning. I said, sure, why not? As from what I heard it would be an amazing experience. So, around 10.45 I consumed one glass, about 8 ounces, and we sat around to wait. Within about 20 to 25 minutes I felt drunker than I have ever been and was stumbling horribly all over the place. I had to have stubbed my same toe about 7 times in a row. None of this dreaming had occurred for a little bit. But my speech was so slurred I hated talking as nobody could understand me. He drove me for a couple rides, I remember feeling that a black dog ran underneath my feet, but I must have been hallucinating. My mouth became very dry and I had no appetite whatsoever. After a couple rides we came back and this is when one of the dreams began, that I know of. I was conscious through this one and it was about 4.30 pm, I walked outside and it was of course very light out and all the neighbors were out mowing the lawns, and kids were playing around. I kept asking my friends why so many people were up already and mowing lawns and shit. They all thought I was messing with them, but I honestly though it was 4.30 am until I waited a few more hours and wondered why it was getting dark. While I was outside my best friend was mowing his lawn for a little bit and I kept looking at him and it didn't look like him at all, in fact the whole night I didn't think he looked like himself, but instead a bartender I work with. Then we go to another friend's house and cook up some hot dogs and pizza, which by then I was hungry enough to eat. This was around 6 pm, we hung out there for shit and by then it had pretty much worn off. I still had odd perceptions of time, and the whole time I could not read up close whatsoever. So, we go back to my friend's house and he brews me up another glass and a half. We went to pick up some butt and when we got back it was dark. My legs for some reason became wobbly again and I went to my car to get the bull. I sat down at a table outside and my best friend was walking to his house and turned towards me and said, I really don't think you should do this Jonathan. I mean I really don't think you should. This time he looked exactly like my dad who I barely ever see and I was just like, what are you talking about? So, I slowly drink the half glass, then we head out front to smoke a couple bowls. While we were smoking, they talked me into chugging the tall glass, half at a time. This time it was about 20 minutes and I got the crazy drunk feeling again. This time it was a little worse and every time I went to grab a drink or just set my arm on the table I spilled a drink, probably about 6 altogether. My depth perception was crazy because some stuff appeared 3D and closer than other things, so if I went to grab the fridge handle, I would miss or if I went to hold onto a pull to swing myself around, I missed and fell right down. Several times I could not reach what I thought I could. By the way, everything that I tried to say to anybody, they couldn't understand and by the time I got halfway through saying it, I completely forgot what I was talking about. So, another friend stopped by and he sat down. I didn't even recognize him until I got so close to him that I could tell whose voice it was when he said, Jonathan, what the fuck are you doing? I fell out of my chair a few times, and I also got up and thought I had plans in my head but kept walking back and forth over and over and one friend asked me each time I walked by where I was going. I eventually got mad because I couldn't understand how he didn't know where I was going. This is where the dreams really started taking place and this is where I didn't remember shit the next morning. Apparently. We all went over to one my other friends nearby houses and while we were there I kept accidentally knocking over his surfboards. I tried to leave his room by going into a corner and trying to get out. I also tried to squeeze behind his bunk bed which is impossible. They all told me I couldn't do it but I insisted that I had done it before. We left there and after each of these dreams I'm holding some kind of object in a hand and when I come out of the dreams it's not there, very confusing where I'm awake the whole time and like 7 times I think there's going to be something in my hand. Another dream as told by my friends was that I thought I was at work, a restaurant, and I was taking all their orders and I would be setting the table with invisible silverware as well as drinks. I went to throw away some invisible trash into a tree. 
I remember coming out of this dream because of where the setting took place and I remember walking back from that area thinking I had something in my hand and nothing once again. They told me that I did that several times throughout the night, picking up objects that weren't there and putting them down. The scariest one for me to hear about was one that about 1am I walked by myself, they were supposed to be right with me, even though they could see me, all the way down the street and I went in someone's yard and just as I was about to bang on their window my friends got hold of me and brought me back to the house. I lifted up like three different chairs and placed them in different spots. I remember seeing a figure in front of me at the table from earlier and I was talking to another friend next to me and said. Where the fuck did he go? He responded, he's right there. It turns out it was him right in front of me and I had no idea it was him. Another dream that occurred that I don't recollect is that I was looking for socks in a bunch of drawers. One of the drawers I was searching through ended up being my friend's kneecap. I also, subconsciously grabbed two of my friends nuts at some point or another in the night. They were freaked out but knew I couldn't really help something that was going on in my dreams, for I know I could have been trying to turn on a water faucet. But somehow I ended up in my best friend's sister's room opening all her drawers looking for socks. Two of them said they tried to stop me but I wouldn't let them. Throughout the night I had several small visuals while I was conscious but while not I don't remember anything. They all said I barely had any contact with them. Apparently we also went to 7-Eleven for someone to get a drink, and I stayed in the car with my best friend and he says I was tickling his neck from the back seat and then I sprawled out into a weird position in the back seat. Before long, for me anyway, it was 3 AM and I was ready to go to bed. In the process of me going to bed, I was trying to get into bed and my friend was telling me in which direction to lay my body, it took me 3 tries of laying in the same exact direction to finally lay down and go to bed. The next day all day I had small, very small visual effects and about 10 times I felt a weird body effect feeling like I was getting pulled to the ground. As soon as my first dose kicked in I felt really heavy. That's the end, I'm pretty sure, I had to call my friends a few times today to hear about the stuff I missed, and it wasn't until I got a call from my brother, my best friend's sister's boyfriend, that I found out about the whole dresser situation because apparently she came home to a few dressers of pulled out drawers with clothes hanging out, this was the only thing I really feel bad about. Overall. The experience was enjoyable. My eyes are almost completely better now, which is the day after the experience. And, also I forgot that many times throughout the night people were asking me how it was and I replied that it wasn't as strong as I thought it would be, and then they would find out that I was referring to the ecstasy from a couple days ago, I guess when they asked me I kept forgetting that I was under the influence of Datura. Again, this was a very dangerous thing for me to try and luckily I had 3 or 4 friends to watch over me. For example, Another thing I forgot about was riding in my friend's car thinking it was mine and seeing that he had power winders and my left window is always halfway down, so I had a revelation that my car actually had power windows and that when he rolled his window up the window was fixed, so the next morning I thought my car was actually going to have power windows. Well, I'm pretty sure that's it. Introduction First off I just want to say I have been a devoted student to the Nightshade family and I work with this plant spirit every single day. I respect her very much and I have gotten to know of her mysteries over time and careful study. I was called to this path a few years ago, strangely, when I wasn't really looking for what would eventually become a way of life for me. I came across the plants at a time when I was living very unhealthy lifestyles and at a time when I wanted out of life and saw these plants as a potential avenue to that goal. Although I never had the chance the plant spirit eventually came back for me in my dreams and inspired me so deeply to her study and way of life. I have tirelessly analyzed and studied her mysterious plants and I think she gets a really bad rap because so many people do not treat her with the proper respect and tend to dive head first in and overdo it leading to a really bad experience. Also, I grow all my own plants and I have a very big datura garden with most of the species. I also grow all species of belladonna, henbane, mandrake, and others. I tend to lean on the side of this being helpful and that she appreciates that effort. I am a 33 year old male in the United States. I have done many experiments before and really gotten to know how the alkaloids work from very minute dosages to fairly bigger ones. There are some drawbacks in ingesting the plant but it was part of my education of her ways. I run a website all about the tropane based nightshade family. So here is my journey. 11 am to 9 30 pm, nothing happened throughout the day when I was eating seeds of Datura ceratocola a somewhat rare water detour from Mexico. I would eat about 7 seeds every couple hours. To be honest I was doing an experiment in the anxiolytic properties of detour. 
In the low dose range I can sometimes have a significant relaxation but I don't encourage anyone to experiment the way I do because she doesn't seem to like everyone and she doesn't seem to like when you try and make her do things to suit your needs. She likes to be unpredictable and I have come to know this and I respect her for it. 10 pm nighttime hits and I am exhausted. I'm a little looped out but generally feeling well. Suddenly I am transported to this really awesome water park and I'm there with one of my childhood friends a best friend from way back in 6th grade named Derek. He and I were both young again and as I said before, we were at this huge water park. I don't believe I have ever been to this one or if it even exists. The whole place was covered in like a foot of water. It was also covered in a net almost like a dome around the whole park and there were pipes that would spray water down on us like the whole park was in a rainstorm. It really added to the enjoyment of the park. We were in line and my turn came up so I dashed into the tunnel and I am flying through the ride and it was so much fun. Not only that but it felt so real. I could feel the water. I could feel my body and everything as though I really was there. Then it starts to get kind of funny because there were security guards everywhere, it was almost like they were prison guards. They wore all black and they just stood at every corner watching. The following day when I was trying to recall the experience I remember thinking too bad there weren't any of those phantom cigarettes in the experience and just then, like that, I got this immediate flashback of the experience of walking by the security guard and I remembered that sure enough, I was smoking the phantom cigarettes. It was as if the cigarette was just part of my hand and would disappear when I wasn't puffing on it. I also remember looking down at the cigarette and saying to myself why am I smoking? I don't even like smoking. I used to do it years ago but I haven't for a few years now. Well anyway, I find it interesting that the tobacco plant is also a nightshade plant, without the tropane alkaloids. Maybe there is a connection. So back to the experience. I was smoking the cigarette and suddenly a guard is looking at me and I remember saying to myself oh shit he sees me I'd better put this thing out. But he just looked at me and did nothing so I was just thinking okay I better get away from this guy before he decides to do something about it. And we were also with a group of other friends that I didn't recognize but knew them nonetheless. We were all smoking, and some of us were drinking beers if I remember correctly. And this one kid who was with us just decided to go up to one of the guards and tell on one of the guys in my crowd. And suddenly they surround him and put him in handcuffs and start to lug him away. And then the kid who told on him goes up to him and asks him if he has an extra cigarette. And the one in handcuffs says you just told on me for smoking dipshit and they took my cigarettes so no. I don't have one. The guards all thought this was funny and laughed out loud for a short while. I remember breaking off from the group and deciding to catch a wave and swim out in the water on the ground. And I soared like 10 feet forward. But then I thought to myself, man. This water must be so dirty. Gross. And just as I thought that I heard people walking by joking about there being HIV in the water. And that was the last I remember. 12 AM to 2 AM. Suddenly I was back in my room laying on my bed and there were all these glasses of water on my bed and I remember that I had to get up and rock a piss. I got up really slow as to not knock over the multiple full glasses randomly placed on my bed. Oh and it was extremely bright in my room. It seemed like it was around noon and the sun was just pouring into my room. I get up and I bring a real glass from my desk to drink some water while on my way to rock a piss. I pissed and I left the glass of water on the top of the toilet. I remember saying damn I can't believe how long I slept I feel like I just fell asleep like an hour ago. While I go back to sleep basking in the warm golden sun pouring into my room. I was very comfortable. And then, I wake up and it's about 8.30 am, I had to rock another piss. But this time it really was the right time and the outside looked as though it matched. I went to rock a piss and I noticed that the glass from last time was sitting exactly where I put it. So what this tells me is that when I got up the first time that was no dream and it had to have been around midnight or 1 to 2 am latest, and the sun was totally at noon position, I thought it was daytime in the pitch black of night. It is so wild to ponder this. That was the entirety of the experience. It seemed as though it consisted of part dream and part active hallucination. But I was really thankful that she was so kind to me as to bring me to that water park and water came up in the other experiences. It's very interesting because Datura Saratakala is a water Datura the only of its kind. The whole experience was all about water. I really enjoyed this because I was able to have first-hand experience of some of the unusual phenomena that happens in her realm. Lots of people give this plant a bad rap because of how people misuse it. But there is a responsible way to go about it. It has patience and time to slowly get to know her by approaching her with respect and reverence. These are truly ancient and holy plants. To best describe this trip I am going to use half of what I remember and half of what my friends told me happened. 
I recall the warm March day very well, it was during my spring break senior year in high school. We had set out to trade of the detour leaves with the rainbow people in Buck Lake. Usually around this time of year I am able to bring them pots, pans, perishable food, milk, eggs etc., and they would trade with either some of the finest marijuana or LSD. Seeing as how there was an extreme shortage of LSD we set out with the goal of trading the detour and some food for some LSD. We arrive and nobody has anything. So we have all of this detour and camping supplies and we are in the middle of the forest, so naturally we camp. We drink a few beers and fire it up a blood. Then my friend tells me that we should take the detour and some Dramamine and trip all night. I thought what the heck. So instead of picking the white flowers he picked the green leaves. He said it would work and I believed him. So I took about 10 Dramamine and 3 green leaves about the size of my hand. What happens next is probably the hardest thing to ever recall. I have used LSD mushrooms and other drugs but nothing, I mean nothing could compare to the sheer power of the trip I was about to experience. The trip began with no onset. As a matter of fact I don't recall the feeling of ever tripping there was no visuals such as color changes and moving objects as with LSD or shrooms. This was purely hallucinations. Nothing was real. Nothing was fake. There was no distinguishing reality from the fantasy world. I completely forgot that I had even taken a drug. This next paragraph is told through the eyes of my friends. The first experience was we all set out our separate ways, three of us. When they found me they said I was in a lake with weeds matted down around me in a perfect circle and was shouting at them that I was in Target playing PlayStation. Then I told them that I was in B's pool. B does not have a pool. I sure as hell though he did that night I will be damned if I was not swimming in it. Neither me or our friends recall much until I said that I was ready to go back to Pat's 20 to 30 miles away from the woods. They said that I demanded to let me drive and we should go back. They did not think so. So I left them. The next paragraph or two is now my own recollection of what happened after I left my friends in the woods. I do not remember leaving them or driving anywhere. I start my memory recall with me standing on the edge of the woods off of a country road where a local spring was. I remember seeing my car on a dirt embankment in a Lake County Sheriff's SUV behind my car. I remember having no feeling of being afraid or scared of getting arrested. I still do not remember taking any drug and do not realize that I am tripping balls. The officer approached me and asked for my ID. In the report it stated that I reached down to the ground and handed him a pile of dirt. The reason I know this is because the lady at the dispatcher's office was the mother of one of the friends that I was tripping with. The initial belief was that I was a mental retarded kid who stole his parents car. I remember him searching my car, and then for some reason says don't worry you are not in trouble, you are not being arrested I am just Baker acting you I had no idea what he meant but I was too calm and relaxed to do anything. So I was placed in cuffs and put in the back of the cop's SUV. During the ride there somehow another officer appeared in the front seat and they began to smoke pot. If I was sober I would have been like what the hell but at the time it did not seem to bother me. Luckily I did not say anything because the second officer in the pot did not exist. We finally arrived to the hospital to take blood and find out what the hell I was on. The officer asked me to step out of the vehicle. I looked down and realized that I was shackled to the vehicle. Not really. Suddenly the image of the shackles disappears right before my eyes. I realize now that I am on something and I am beginning to come down. I was escorted into the hospital and placed on a bed and they began to draw blood. Now images of people and things began to appear and disappear. While the images were there they seemed so realistic, so real that I could touch smell and hear them. It seemed like they were really there, there was complete interaction with the hallucinations. The doctors found nothing in their standard drug testes. I was now becoming sober enough to remember bits and pieces and I recall taking the drugs. I told the doctors what I had taken. They said the only thing for me to do is to go into detox until the drug completely wears off. I remember sitting in the chair at the detox and random people would sit in the chair beside me. All of them would disappear within a minute. The only person that was actually beside me was my mother and she kept asking me who I was talking to. So my mother got me signed in and they said that I would have to be in there at least 24 hours, and that the doctor would evaluate me and tell me whether or not I was okay to go. The next day I woke up completely sober and feeling refreshed. I had tripped for a solid 24 hours. The doctor evaluated me and said that I was good to go. Through all of the different drugs I have done I usually do them more than once. This drug I did once and will never touch again. Datura can be your friend. Experiments were done with physostigmine salicylate on hand and using an entourage blunt skin cut in half, 
about 4.5 inches in length. As for the detura that was used, the leaves were taken from a plant that was just removed from the ground, parts of the plant were separated from each other and the leaves set out on canvas to dry in sunlight. Larger leaves, weeks later were still not as dried as the smaller leaves. Detour alone. Subjects in groups 3 split 0.2 grams to 0.3 grams cigarettes of the dried leaves hand ground most subjects questioned afterwards what they were supposed to feel. No input was provided to them, only data from them was collected. All but one experienced the need to sit down. Two people who were extremely agitated found themselves not appeased but extremely calmed down. A few hours later all of the subjects found themselves still in a delirious state. No hallucinations were reported. All of the subjects had stated something about tiredness, sleepiness or if they needed something to sleep they would recommend it. Two subjects reported the feelings of being high but did not specify what sort of high that they felt. One female subject reported no effect, one subject went drinking afterwards and reported the next day that rooms were half spinning, that things looked constantly falling into place from above. Detour mixed with equal parts cannabis. Multiple sessions were recorded with subjects from 20 to 40 years old. Names were kept anonymous as participants wished to remain as such. 0.2 gram of dry detour were ground by hand with 0.3 gram of deceited cannabis. Again, cigarettes were rolled using tobacco wraps, though none was mixed with the cigarettes. All subjects reported being unable to taste the detour specifically and reported a much longer burning time. Later this was confirmed by burning equal sized amount of cannabis cigarettes, where burning times for cannabis alone was a third of that for the mixtures used and did not go out. Users experiences were not compared to their use of cannabis alone. Again, only one female subject reported feeling no effects from the cigarette. One subject reported that they were unable to complete physical tasks for the day and went to sleep around when they had watched the sunset. Both activities were not normal for them. Another subject reported it burnt me out quicker. Another subject stated that they would consider mixing the two regularly if adequate information was provided. Another of the female subjects reported that she had much more analytic thought patterns than normal, however she did not report feeling the same sort of tiredness that the male subjects had experienced. One male subject reported enjoying being in the rain more. Thoughts and Conclusions Although slightly premature, we felt that little experience was reported with smoking of Datura. However none of the subjects reported hallucinations that both the researchers and experience reports have documented. Roots, stems and flowers were not tested. If this from the nature of combustion or from a low atropine and scopolamine content detura, the author is not sure, however, with proper knowledge and respect for the plant and its family, that detura could continue to be a useful tool, in not only the shaman's toolkit, but the average person's medicine cabinet as well. It was a Saturday night and I was off to a party. I am not a stranger to psychoactives but I am no expert either. I have used cathinone on occasion, amphetamines a few times, MDMA regularly and cannabis daily. For this party my friend, D, and myself each had one MDMA capsule about 80 mg, had a 500 ml bottle of D made from Datura slash Moonflower which tasted like grape juice and a couple grams of some good weed. D plus zero. We dropped the MDMA capsule and within 15 minutes I can feel slight effects of the onset. D plus 30 minutes. I feel effects of the MDMA a bit now, things are feeling better and I have a urge to talk, I also begin playing with my hair a bit because it feels nice. We then go into a room and each drink 250 milliliters of the Datura tea, after this I feel a bit lightheaded and a little intoxicated from the MDMA. We only drink half because a full bottle is far too high a dose for this experiment. D plus 1 hour and 5 minutes. There is a fight at the party and people are chased out. We go to the car and I am getting tingling sensations everywhere, I feel more empathic and feel the urge to touch more, the MDMA is working but not to its full potential, usually from these caps I am already rolling. I don't know if the Datura has delayed the effects, I cannot be sure. I am very talkative though and my thoughts are creative and flowing easily. I also feel a bit of anxiety, nothing to complain about though. D plus 2 hours. I am washed with a feeling of euphoria which is amazing, I can feel this is only the beginning. I think this is the MDMA doing its work now. I am very talkative and feel close to everyone near me. It doesn't feel like a regular MDMA roll though, it's a bit different, can't quite compare it to anything I've felt before. I am mellow yet extremely talkative, my ego is softened but I do not feel as intoxicated as usual. D plus 2 hours and 30 minutes. We got to my friend's place and to go smoke weed, 
I am feeling very euphoric and it is still building, I feel more intoxicated and I am talking a lot and generally being loud and entertaining. Me and D compare how we feel, he says he has never felt so good in his life, I can agree with him, the detour must be working as well because even when I took two MDMA capsules I didn't feel so good. D plus 3 hours. The euphoria is amazing, never felt so good, I think it has plateaued now, I am more chilled now though, can sort of control myself and what I say, very thirsty though, between me and D we have each had about 1 liter of water each and our pupils are massive. Me and D are talking so much and explaining how good we feel to our other friends, they say we are tripping balls, I tend to disagree. D plus 3 hours and 30 minutes. The euphoria is surprisingly still increasing, ever so slightly now and I feel more mellow now. Colors are becoming brighter as well and I am still thirsty as hell, we drink more water. D plus 4 hours. My friends are smoking weed and I decide to see what will happen if I smoke some. I hit the pipe twice and oh my word, the euphoria is on like I have ever felt, all the effects I was previously feeling seem to be amplified and I can feel I am becoming slightly delirious and disconnected from reality. D plus 4 hours and 15 minutes. I put my head down to rest and when I look up it feels as though my body has remained behind resting. My eyes are like cameras and whatever I focus on provides a clarity while everything else seems to blur. I feel almost an out of body experience now. Figures in the room look so much different than ever, I feel as if I am looking through a new pair of eyes. D plus 4 hours and 45 minutes to D plus 8 hours. I lose sense of time and I am delirious, I am wandering in my mind amazed at what is in it. I am unable to hold proper conversation and I am answering questions my mind created out loud, my friends think this is hilarious. I am almost having a full on conversation with myself, D is not as gone as me but can relate to me, and we speak beautifully to each other and share a deep connection. Thank God he is already a good friend. I am still able to talk, but occasionally my mind loses track and I begin wandering in my mind again. I am having mild hallucinations, such as amazing colors and movement of simple objects and my friends faces expand and move around like a lava lamp, this is awesome, I am in utter amazement of what I am seeing. For a short period I feel an out of body experience, I look at my arms and wonder whose arms they are, they certainly did not feel like they belonged to me. I smoke more weed throughout this period and every time it brings an amazing rush of euphoria and amplifies effects, eventually I am too scared to smoke weed because I am afraid I cannot handle this euphoria anymore and I believed if I smoked more weed my brain would shut down. I feel my pulse and it is very hard to find, not a good sign, I also have drunk about 4 liters of water throughout the night, my eyes are like baseballs and D is beginning to come down a bit. D plus 8 hours and 30 minutes. The euphoria is fading, D is also coming down. He is a little more sober than me, not by much though, we both still feel good and a bit intoxicated. We decide we should smoke more weed to try and soften the come down, this time the weed actually does help cushion our coming down instead of amplifying our effects. We go and chill by the couches and we slowly and smoothly come down, I do not crave the euphoria as I have experienced 5 to 6 hours of intense euphoria. D plus 9 hours. I am tired, I lie down and I fall asleep. My dreams are extremely vivid and pleasant very trippy. D plus 14 hours. I wake up, feeling almost perfect, I look at a painting that I saw last night, it looks normal, last night the grass was moving and luminous colors were on it, now it is just a faded grey landscape painting. My vision is still blurred and when I try to concentrate on an object my eyes jiggle. D plus 15 hours. I go to a mall, things seem clearer and I feel happy which is surprising, I am able to appreciate the simple things I see at the mall. I feel extremely lethargic though. D plus 24 hours. My vision has returned to normal, I am no more lethargic and everything is back to normal. Overall, this was the best experience I have had using psychoactives, great visuals, unbelievable euphoria and mood lift and my first glimpse of an out of body experience which was truly amazing, I appreciate all the things I saw and had the most pleasant trip I think anyone could have with Datura slash Moonflower. I think the MDMA kept everything positive and happy and I think we took the perfect amount of Datura so we didn't end up having any negative effects from it, as for the weed it was like an amplifier during the trip and brought us down smoothly, no crash at all, I think that sleeping at the time we did also helped us come down nicely. I could almost not even feel my pulse at one point and I let my friends know and they watched me, also watch yourself, if you were able to, try take notes or get your friends to remember stuff for you as I did. Overall. This is unlike any experiences I have ever had and was truly the most amazing I have ever felt in my life.
This was my first experiment with Datura. I'd taken mushrooms four times two years ago, that was the extent of my experience with psychedelics. I heard about Datura from Carlos Castaneda, and wanted to try some in a sober-minded, experimental, and respectful manner. I bought a pack of seeds from a company that doesn't treat their seeds with chemicals. I soaked 28 seeds for half an hour, then drank the water, chewed the seeds thoroughly and swallowed. This was about 9 pm. I had read in Castaneda that Datura has possessive, female qualities, and that one ought to treat her with respect. I have a good relationship with my sister, one that is respectful and non-possessive so, while waiting for the seeds to take effect, I played a bunch of songs that she likes, and that remind me of her. This put me in a good frame of mind for the subtle effects. D plus 25 minutes. The music had more of an impact on me than it normally would, and I found myself crying in sympathy for my sister, who had grown up with me and experienced some of the same family strife. After a while, I got up and danced around. At first, my dancing was inspired, in part from anticipation, but also somewhat from the drug. I had moments of feeling closer and more involved with my experience. D plus 50 minutes. I was still dancing, but my movements were lethargic. I checked my pupils in the mirror and they were slightly dilated and my body felt soft and puffy. I felt a loss of coordination as I poured myself a glass of water, some dry mouth. I drank just a little, then opened the fridge and stared at it for a few minutes. Generally, I kept a sense of humor about my idiocy, and allowed it to run its course. I stood outside in my backyard for a moment, and felt more still, grounded and powerful than usual. D plus 1 hour 10. I climbed into bed feeling very heavy and slow. While falling asleep, I tried to do dreaming as I sometimes do when I'm falling asleep. Usually, I have some control of my bodily sensation while lying in bed, but with the effect of the drug, I felt like I had more concentration and could elicit slower and stronger effects. Once, I was imagining a scene from my personal history and felt myself being pulled quite strongly toward it. I didn't want to go there just yet, and was able to back out of the scene. D plus 10 hours 30 minutes. I woke up with some lingering lethargy and slight dry mouth. Slightly lowered pulse rate. Other than that, no noticeable side effects. Opinions. It seems like a good tool for exploring lucid dreaming. My body felt much more inclined to follow my mind and my imagination. A normally harmless juvenile thought about something like Jews burning in the Holocaust, might ignite a vivid and real experience. The trip has inspired me to continue my personal consciousness studies. I will probably use Totoro again in another month or so, with the same or stronger dosage. This night took place on October 15th, Fall 2005. During one of our board nights at a friend's house we decided we wanted to trip really bad. We couldn't find any shrooms at the time so we collected some Datura seed pods. First we opened quite a few seed pods and filled the bottom of an average size saucepan of Datura seeds. We brought it to a strong boil, then let it simmer on medium heat with a saucepan top cover for one hour. We had two batches going at once. Next we consumed it. I used a small coffee mug to drink it, and I filled the mug about five times, maybe five and a half. It only took about 30 minutes for me to start feeling a slight trip. I noticed that if I looked at my hands I could see what looked like tiny white molecules running up and down it, at this point I knew it was only a matter of time. After about 3 hours my speech was slurred and walking was very difficult because I felt like my body was weighed down. The following is the minor details I remember the rest of the night, although they may not be in correct order. I don't know how I got outside to my truck or why I did. But the next thing I knew I was sitting in the driver's seat in front of my friend's house defrosting my windshield. Things happened almost like a dream that I didn't realize was a dream. It all seemed like perfect reality to me. Another memory I have is going down a street leaving town when I suddenly realized this isn't where I want to be so I turned around. Arrow would note, driving while intoxicated, tripping, or extremely sleep deprived is dangerous and irresponsible because it endangers other people. Don't do it, now as far as I can remember there was no one else in my truck with me, but suddenly my brother was in the passenger seat, he lives 3 hours away. It seemed completely normal to me though and we started talking, I don't remember where I drove or where I was going. I do have a horrible memory of what happened next though. I clearly remember looking over at my brother, who was either all in my head or it was someone else riding with me. He had the scariest look in his eyes looking straight out ahead of him, then suddenly he slumped over and closed his eyes. I began shaking him violently telling him to wake up and not to die on me. I'm not sure if I parked for this or not. 
Next thing I know I'm at a corner of two streets stepping out of the car to see where I was so I could find a hospital. But when I stepped back in my car the passenger seat was empty. I may have imagined it all or I scared one of my friends so bad he ran off. Next memory I have is being in a parking lot of an abandoned grocery store. All of a sudden the night sky was filled with fireworks and for some reason even though it was 3 a.m. my mind registered it as a football game on campus, even though I was nowhere near campus. These fireworks were insane with flashing outer edges to the circle and sparks chasing each other around in the middle. Then I looked behind me to see if anyone else was around. There was a girl I've never seen before sitting in my back cab. You have no idea how bad this scared me, I turned my head back to the fireworks and tried to forget about it. After about 5 minutes I turned around and the girl was gone. I then remember the fireworks drifting down to the ground as they burned out. They would skid the streets and sidewalks slowly fading away. I no longer have a memory of what happened next, I woke up the next morning in my bed with a slight headache. A friend of ours, let's call him Rich, drank a tea brewed from Datura flowers, Sydney Australia, that were growing in a neighbor's yard. He had been warned that it was a bad idea. Let me preface this by saying that before he consumed this tea he was a reasonably rational person, although considered somewhat eccentric, he was 20 years old, and was attending Macquarie University at time. The tea was brewed at, deleted, and we lived about 15 miles away. At about 2 in the morning Rich shows up in his underwear, boxers and a t-shirt, at our door babbling about his mother needing money for the holiday, we looked outside and saw a cab waiting. I went out and asked the cabbie what was going on, he told me that our friend had hailed him at Hyde Park, in the city center, and asked to be taken to our place, he was babbling incoherently, and the cabbie felt sorry for him, Australians are like that, ask no questions, just help him out, and took a chance. I paid the cabbie for the ride, and went inside. Rich starting saying that his room was the living room and that he wanted all the people to leave so he could, something or other, let's just say it was nonsense, cause there were only three of us there. After about 60 minutes of babbling he went into the kitchen where he was talking to the tea tin, while shaking his fist violently at the refrigerator, he mysteriously turned and went out the back door and then started talking to the orchids. We were considering taking him to hospital, but led him into a spare bedroom and watched him overnight. He remained in a weird state for at least another 24 hours. My girlfriend took a day of work to watch him. After he stopped his babbling, he became very quiet, and would not talk to anyone. We later learned that he had visited several other people during that night, mysteriously leaving at some point. No one knows how he got to Hyde Park. He did strange things such as pulling out his penis and investigating it closely for hours, pretending to be eating and drinking things, talking to inanimate objects, the list goes on and on. The sad thing is that after this episode he became psychotic, and refused to talk to anyone for about two years, his life was ruined, and he wandered from friend's house to friend's house looking for food and shelter, he effectively became a hobo, disappearing for months on end. After a few years he began talking to people and learned what had happened, he was very ashamed, but still remained somewhat psychotic, he has never returned from that holiday. We are posting this to let others know of how dangerous this stuff is, and to stay away from it. As far as herbs and substances go, I'm basically a grizzled veteran, having repeatedly sampled nearly all of the cornucopia of hallucinogens on a staple diet of ganga since I was 17 or so. To give you an idea of where my head was at, let me preface this with a brief history. At the time I took to Torah, I was in a vulnerable and confused period of my life. Half a year earlier, I went from being very happy in my life and having good health to getting sick and almost dying losing my house to the hospital bills, and my girlfriend threatening to leave me if I didn't get it together. I responded by rearranging my life with less stress for the doctors and acupuncturists orders more exercise and fresh air, good diet, no drugs, etc. My spiritual friend and teacher encouraged me to discover my true self. I began frequenting the parks in and around my town to go for walks and exercise. It was at one of these parks where I met many huge detourist Ramonian plants with upwards facing white and yellow trumpets. I was always mesmerized at the sight of these plants, much less the smell that always seemed to beckon like a mermaid song on the breeze. My intuition told me this plant had a teaching for me. I'd read Carlos Castaneda in my youth and Dr. Andrew Weil when he was writing for High Times, and I knew enough to be scared of this prospect. But so strong was the magnetism of this plant that, 
Over a period of weeks, I studied and ruminated about it, finally getting up the nerve to experience it. In late summer of this year, I prayed and made offerings to the four directions, heaven and earth, and to the plant with great respect, asking if I may take some seed pods, not really to get high off of, not that I looked down on that sort of thing obviously it just wasn't what I was looking for at the time, but to ask the plant if she would help me to know my true self better so that I may be able to fully heal and help others, all in the gentlest way possible. I waited for the reply and the plant sent soft laughter on the wind, delighted to give me some seeds. I then cut three thorn apples from three of the biggest plants in the park, gave thanks, and went home. What I'm about to say may seem strange or impossible to those who understand things only in terms of physicality, chemicals and molecules, etc. But it was at this point that the energy slash spirit of this plan seemed to be affecting me, accepting my invitation and already working on my etheric body, though it was so subtle at the time I was still unaware. In any event, to me plants are people and teachers, and I thought I was just inviting another special guest over. What I didn't know was that I'd also unwittingly escorted a freakishly powerful and gigantic goddess into my tiny one-bedroom apartment. I began cutting the thorn apples in half and removing the seeds to be distilled in vodka. My girlfriend came into the kitchen to see what I was doing because said she felt the energy in the apartment shift dramatically. I explained to her that I was making a highly poisonous tincture for topical use only. I emphatically told her that no one should ingest this and that I never had any intentions of taking this plan internally. The next day, in cleaning up the kitchen, I found two tiny seeds on the counter. Something told me I should just try brewing a little tea with these, again this seems to be the energetic influence on my etheric mind body at work here. I rationalized to myself that there were numerous cases of people who consumed these seeds by the hundreds. Surely two seeds would be nothing, a homeopathic amount. I honestly expected and wanted nothing special at all to happen, just to get a little plant DNA and energetic blueprint in me. I boiled the seeds for 15 minutes or so and put ginger and licorice in for flavor. So stupidly confident was I that nothing would happen, I began sipping the tea in my car on the way to my friend's house. I took one sip and felt the plant take a hold of my body nearly instantaneously. To me this was ludicrous, because even a good shroom tea takes at least 5 to 10 minutes to start kicking in. I told myself it was psychological, a placebo effect slash anxiety attack or something, and decided to take one more sip. I took a bigger second sip and felt the exact same thing instantly again butterflies as soon as it hits the stomach, constriction of the throat, heart racing, mind swimming, armpits sweating, etc. I was officially scared at this point and promptly threw the rest of the tea out the window. By the time I got to my friend's house, I was driving like a drunkard, barely able to navigate and endure the sensory onslaught of traffic. Hero would note, driving while intoxicated, tripping or extremely sleep deprived is dangerous and irresponsible because it endangers other people. Don't do it. Note, the sum total of detura that I ingested was just two sips from a cup of 2 seed tea. At my friend's house, I checked my eyes in the bathroom and found them hugely dilated. I decided to walk to a nearby park and do a ridiculous amount of calisthenics while drinking jugs of water in the hopes of sweating a lot of it out. My friend was with me and we did some martial arts training as well. The exercise did help as far as the endorphin rush and resulting sense of release and sedation, but the psychoactive effects went nowhere. The tracers were obnoxious and my brain didn't seem to focus or concentrate right anymore, making it almost impossible to read, watch TV or drive. There were little blue orbs floating around wherever I went, and I had the distinct feeling I was not alone when I was alone now and perhaps may never be again. I also could palpably sense thoughts and feel energies from people and places much more intensely than before causing me to have to avoid certain people and places for fear of them driving me insane. The next day, my friend called me asking why he was feeling dosed and seeing tracers and things when he didn't take anything. I said it must have been transferred through the sweat and grappling from the martial arts training. My girlfriend was also feeling extra spacey and strange even though she didn't take any either. Even my cat seemed tripped out. By this time, I was freaking out thinking that I was messing up all my friends in this gigantic accident that seemed to be spiraling out of control but they reassured me they were alright and it wasn't that strong to them. But they most definitely felt the effects and this further blew my mind at the power of this otherworldly plant. The next day, they felt normal again, but I was still as altered as when I first took it. I went to my acupuncturist and told him what I did. After having a good-natured laugh at me, he gave me a calming treatment and told me to eat lots of miso soup because my digestive-friendly flora and bacteria were devastated by the poisons of the datura. Another healer recommended burdock for cleansing the liver and blood, along with plenty of exercise. They had no idea, however, how long it would take for me to be normal again, if ever. 
It has been 4 months now, and there has been no change. I've learned to make friends with the Datura plant. We've forged a fierce bond and I have bottomless respect for her. However, so steadfast is my resolve never to purposefully or otherwise accidentally consume this plant again that I safely disposed of the tincture I made, along with literally everything in my house the plant touched, including many dishes, knives, clothes I sweated it out on, etc. Moonflower has an indescribably serious and disturbing priest-like side with a power impossible to convey, but it cannot be overstated. As far as helping me know my true self, not really although she seems to have afforded perhaps a glimpse, but not without a price and only perhaps at my sincere request and adding the addendum to my prayers, in the gentlest way possible, did she not fully unleash her wrath upon my ignorant psyche. Here I am, an experienced psychonaut who had no overtly negative result with this plant, and yet I can assure you I will never even get near this plant again as long as I live. It is now 11.35 p.m., as I sit here writing these words. In the timeless span of a mere eight hours after my ingestion of LSD I can now safely say that I arrived back in my earthly coil for at least the near foreseeable future, however far that could possibly be. As my vision still pulsates with the rippling, geodesic shapes to the tune of some massive, incomprehensible algorithm the likes of which I could never possibly hope to grasp, I have found it somewhat necessary this time around to chronicle my experience. My girlfriend had just gotten home from the hospital. She had just had an invasive procedure performed, minor surgery, upper GI endoscopy, to which she had been given Burst and Benadryl during the actual procedure and was now recovering from the after effects. We had discussed the day previous that I would be taking the LSD sometime that weekend, though the exact time of my departure was not specified. It actually coincided perfectly with her sleeping off the initial effects of her dosages from the hospital. I must admit, the idea of sitting on a potential six hits of acid definitely stirred in me the desire to get the ball rolling, so, after arriving home, I promptly cut my blotter in half and took three doses down the hatch. The blotter itself was something that came upon me quite suddenly. One day my distant friend and co-worker Chris texts me, do you want mushrooms? I can get acid too. To which I distinctly remember with fondness replying, yes. So, a day or two later, here I have this tiny square with some lightning bolts on it. Okay, so, here we go, we'll see if you're worth the paper you're dripped on. And so now here we were, with my girlfriend laying peacefully in the living room with her dream pillow, she loves her pillow, in the afternoon sunlight, and I was to be found next door in the master bedroom dissolving the first portion of my trip in my mouth. The comeuppance of it all came on rather gracefully, gently even. I had managed to find, underneath our bed, littered with various books on philosophy and the arcane, a veritable wizard's library under our bed. Monsters Under the Bed, a book entitled, The Great Waldo Search by Martin Hanford. A book, it had turned out, I could never seem to willfully dispose. The irony of finding this book to use as a stepping off point for the trip was not lost for a moment, and I welcomed the nostalgic pull back to my childhood as the effects of the acid were slowly starting to creep up into the open recesses of my mind. It became a game for me, finding Waldo and his wizard companion, and his scrolls. All the while the acid started to take hold making the lines of the drawings crisper. Bringing to light all the little details Martin had plied on each and every character. As I went from page to page, world to world, things got noticeably livelier one moment after the next. The acid was proving to be a worthwhile investment. This made me laugh. The electric currents now softly began to run through me. I began to fully appreciate how the interplay of light and shadow reflected off the hairs of my arms. How everything in the room took on soft, golden hues, interspersed with purple and green. My brain would suffer the occasional zap of my grow lamp buzzing out of control for brief little explosions of sound. Which invariably remind me of what to expect, as I was expecting it, and laughing at the realization of it all. My bedroom is a little something that needs explaining. I have a grow lamp in our bedroom that grows my three friends. The first is Al. He's an aloe vera plant, with many pups at the moment. The second is Coleus. A plant possessing a very pleasurable aesthetic, just like its master. Picture vibrant, green-tipped leaves of dark purple, amber, maroon metallic hues. And my third, and perhaps most important friend, Datura Inoxia. Yes, I have a beautiful Datura Inoxia plant in my bedroom that I have been cultivating for several years. I had been trying to align myself with its spirit all the while, and have taken it quite slowly, out of the fear and respect it both duly deserves. This plant, however, is mentioned because of the role it has to play in this particular experience. 
With my ascension in full swing, I managed to find another potent object underneath my bed. This was an object I had found amidst a particularly foreboding mescaline trip from many years prior and had subsequently made its way to my dusty bin of antiquities. It was a stone. A very hard, very dense piece of white quartz intermixed with equal parts blood red through light. To have seen this stone when it first came into my consciousness so many years ago was a sight to behold indeed. I remember, distinctly, waves of energy rushing over and through this stone. Almost as if it were unmoved by the very swirls and vortices of energy. A veritable port in the storm, so to speak. And now, ironically, a word quite common to the LSD trip you will find, it served as exactly the sort as I held it in the palm of my hand, utterly dumbstruck at the way the light and energy would tessellate over the surface of its utterly dense existence. Unaware to how truly powerful this device might be for anchoring oneself within the very essence of space and time. Here was a thing if ever there was one. This rock had suddenly become my focal point for everything there ever was to conceive about the conceivability of everything. As I would continue to hold this rock and pontificate these thoughts, countless hours, days, months, years would pass by in the form of mere moments, indecipherable as to whatever exact, measurable units of time were actually spent. Yes, yes. Everything was going just as planned. But, my plans were a bit more maligned than anticipated, isn't that how things always happen to be revealed when on an acid trip? I had recently made a batch of flying ointment that I'd been working up the nerve to try, waiting for a worthy, whimsical moment such as this. The ointment consisted of melting a couple cups of lard into a liquid and mixing equal parts coleus and detora, about three cups of each, fresh and finely processed. To which I simmered for several hours together with a few leaves of al, of which I had graciously accepted, that I had thrown into the mix for good measure. After the simmering, I strained out the plant material and set into a container for cooling, but not before first adding several dropperfuls of a tincture I had made strictly from parts of the Datura plant. This tincture was made from straight Everclear poured over plant material and set for about two and a half weeks in a cool, dark place. And so, here we have the culmination of all that work coming to a head, in the form of me slathering my temples, armpits, underside of my legs and feet, and genitalia with a jade green mixture. A sight to behold, to be sure. And well on my way for blast off. Or so I at least anticipated. As I lay in a meditative state on the floor beside the bed and the plants, I hear a stirring in the next room. My beloved comes in the room, groggy and disheveled and hungry. She looks at the naked man lying on the floor, and says, Oh, are you meditating? And then groggily walks back into the living room. I love my girlfriend's smile. The last vestiges of ordinary reality are now far behind, as I lay with my eyes closed, envisioning electric, pulsating, rhythmical masses of flesh that are tessellating and spinning to some weird sense of cosmic assertion that, at the time, I am completely aware of the profundity of it all, whilst in the same vein completely ignorant of why it happens to be that way, but yet, knowing that in and of itself brings a smile to my face. My girlfriend has now come to her senses and is talking to me from the dining room. She is going over the post-op paperwork and joking about all the silly formalities on the paperwork. She is utterly lucid with her humor, and I can't help but be infatuated with her charm and overall life force that she is now clearly exuding. The culmination of her finding out just what was wrong with her, combined with the empathetic effects of the LSD that I am impacting her with are not taken for granted. She talks with me of how she feels as if a great weight has been lifted off her shoulders. I smile at her, she still has no idea of where I am at mind space wise. I sit there in awe of how absolutely beautiful she is, as she is talking with me about the moments she is starting to remember with the nurses and the doctor. Everything she says is joyful in every sense of the word. The way she is saying it, what she's saying, how she looks as she's saying it. The syncretism of the very fabric of being is not lost on me as I sit and gaze upon this fellow creature in complete adoration. With LSD, I am perpetually smiling, and even as I stare back into my own saucer-sized, black holes for eyes, I am smiling. As it was with this I knew I needed to take it deeper. Knowing that my tolerance would only build rapidly after this day of experience and that I wouldn't have another chance at the complete ego death I was after, I decided to eat the other half of my blotter. This had been about 2-3 to three hours into my trip at this time. Any other seasoned LSD tripper could probably attest to the awe-inspiring visuals that were now breathing from one realm of reality into another. The patterns in themselves, in my vision, were there as if to say, yes, all of this shit is happening right now right here, forever and always. So, yeah, get used to that feeling. Cause it's right here, now, here, now, here, now. I can feel the remaining blotter starting to take its effect. 
I am unsure as to what role, if any, the ointment is now playing. In hindsight, I really do feel it added to the distortion of looking into the essence of things, though I believe this may have been more psychosomatic as none of the typical symptoms of detour use could be discerned, but I am sure of one thing, it feels as though the very way I am perceiving things is vibrating and moving in and out of time. At one point, in perhaps what one would consider the apex of my trip, I remember sitting on the bed looking out the window as the sun was setting. It was shining its light through the webs of a funnel weaver spider's abode who happened to be sitting right out in the middle of it at that moment. I was staring so intently at it, when suddenly my girlfriend comes back into the room. She sits on the bed next to me and looks at me, and she now knows something is up, but it's something she's never experienced before. I look into her eyes and an overwhelming emotion of solidarity and connection overtakes me. She seems to discern this feeling and replies with a knowing look that felt as if the very universe had just acknowledged itself. As if the yin had just winked at the yang. I'm a cancer, if that means anything, and so I have no problems with admitting that I am rather in tune with my emotions. The impact this moment has on me, sitting with my girlfriend, resonates over and over again. Then something happens. As I am sitting there staring at her, a sense of vacuity overtakes me the likes of which I hadn't foreseen. Suddenly I am staring into the face of nothing. This creature in front of me moves through a thousand iterations of life and death, dust to dust. I see this in this face. I can see it alive and dead in front of me. It is only slightly smiling at me now, as if to say it is all inevitable. I can feel something about to dislodge in myself, and I think, looking back, this was to be myself I was to dislodge from. But, in my cowardice, I decided to not let go completely and be swept away by the crossing of paths with the complete and utter unknown. I regress back into the torment of trying to grasp what it is this creature has to do with this moment that now finds itself here with me. I get up and open the window for some air. I slowly start to gain a foothold on my psyche and my girlfriend appears, lovingly, once more. She now goes back into the living room. And now I am suddenly beset by the sound of a roaring car outside. It sounds fierce and guttural. I hear it rip roar close by and it takes off in a direction I cannot see from my window. I can hear it ride long and far and free into the expanse of beyond. I get lost in the sound only to find that the car has now come full circle and it is right back on the other side of the trees. I know it's there, and I desperately want to get a look at it, but every time that it sounds like it's going to pop out from the trees it ends up going the opposite direction and then I hear it ride out once more into the distance. It becomes a game I know deep down I have no chance of winning of trying to catch a glimpse of this mysterious phantom car. I have the sneaking suspicion this is perhaps what Don Juan had warned Carlos about in relation to death putting on its hat. Alas, the remainder of my trip was spent in quiet contemplation of things, from myself and the role I have to play in this lifetime, to trying to wrap my puny human intellect around the vast expanse of all known and unknown reality, and laughing and marveling at my utter failure to do so. In retrospect, I am very glad to have made the journey back to this place yet again and I feel it came at both the right time for myself, and my beloved girlfriend. Anyone who happens to be scared at the prospect of trying an acid trip is by all means completely sane for thinking as much, but, for the sake of knowing, and for the sake of the universe itself and thusly consciousness itself, you owe it to yourself to face that fear, if not for the clarity that it can bring, then surely for the indescribable experience that it will impact you with, for the rest of your mortal existence, and beyond. Godspeed. Well, I made my little tea, using around 7 flowers in a pot of water. Well, it all went fine for the first couple hours but then all hell broke loose. My girlfriend called me and I kept blacking out on the phone, but when I came to my senses I was saying something about a James Bond movie I just watched. I seriously thought I was in the James Bond movie. The problem was, my subconscious was talking to my girlfriend and saying some crazy things every time I blacked out. And then my nearsighted vision started going bad. My eyes dilated so large that I could not see anything two feet or closer to my face. That means when my girlfriend texted me, I could not read it, and it was a horrible thought. So I hung up with her at two and I am dead serious when I say I called her back as soon as I set the phone down because I just wanted to tell her I loved her and that I am going to bed. Which I had not done before. It took about five calls for her to pick up, and when she did, she wondered why I had called her at five in the morning. I literally blacked out for three hours without any recollection of what just happened. The next day I was out of it altogether and my eyes were still dilated. My vision did not improve much for the whole day, which made work very hard. I was tired, and my stomach was extremely upset. 
all of that would have been okay, saying I am an experienced drug user and can cope with the obvious side effects, but the cotton mouth I got from the tea was overwhelming. It was impossible to get rid of, and it lasted all day, seeming to get worse as the day progressed. Once I had another night's sleep, I felt better and two days after almost all the side effects had dissipated. My vision was still a tad off, and I was extremely worn out. Detura is cheap, and is easy to prepare, but it had horrible side effects and made me delirious. Blacking out is not only dangerous, but also very inconvenient depending on one's location. Blacking out here refers to losing consciousness, or the conscious actions of any movement, this does not mean I couldn't functions, or respond to the outside world, it just means I had absolutely no control of what I was doing, and when I came to my senses, I would hardly remember what happened. Until the mid-90s in France one could buy those anti-asthma cigarettes called Louis Legras. The main ingredient was Detour leaves but they also contained other plants such as Belladonna. I was 19 at the time and was called to the compulsory French army test, which I really wanted to fail in order to avoid serving one year. A lot of people were pretending to be psychologically ill so the army people were very tough on fake psychos. A friend I was hanging out with the night before handed me five of these cigarettes saying, with those you won't need to pretend being deranged because you'll really be deranged. I went back home and started to make an infusion with the five ciggies, looked like a really dark tea, then I went to bed. I woke up late the next morning, just had the time to jump into my trousers, grab a shirt and hit the kitchen to drink the magic potion. It was so sour I had to add loads of honey to it. I drunk two mugs and got out to catch the bus. Within five minutes, I was on that bus, my hands started to grip a bar and my head starting to move around, with a slight paranoia-like feeling. I hoped some other guys were going to the military camp were on that bus, five minutes ride, so I just followed them. As I entered the camp the effects were kicking hard but I was still able to talk. I met an officer that I knew from school who laughed at me saying. Ah ah weirdo you don't want to do it, the army. We were all in line, going through the medical tests, first thing they ask you is to drop some urine in a small glass. Impossible. My mouth was also very dry and from that moment I realized it was gonna be a hard trip. They carried on with the tests, some funny results came out as I noticed I could read the smallest letters on the eyesight test and hear the slightest noise they would throw in the earphones for the hearing test, but I miserably failed the contrast slash colors test. I was supposed to see letters, numbers or symbols. I remember talking about devils, witches and a goat dancing around a bonfire. I had to go through a lot of stairs and corridors to see various doctors, eyes, ears, etc. And one thing that was really crazy is that I couldn't tell if the stairs were going up or down. Sometimes I would want to lean against a wall and the wall I expected just wasn't there. During lunch I chalked on a small sardine filet I was trying to eat. Army guys had to grab my legs and turn me upside down, then a doc came and asked me if I wanted to see a psychologist, I said I was alright and I didn't want to but he insisted. So there I was in the psych office, being asked all sorts of questions while eyes are popping out of the table, I try to poke them but they move too fast. Are your parents divorced? Yes. Are you afraid of snakes? No spiders. If I say red you think what? Blood, of course. In a way I was still aware I should act within my own trip, though I still wonder if the psych decided to evict me because he thought I was deranged or if he knew what kind of stuff I had taken and thought if this guy is up to this in order to avoid the army then we don't want to take any risks. So he declared me P4+, plus, means a social and near to dangerous but not enough to put me in the psychic ward. So I went out with my paper secretly happy and still very fucked up. I jumped in an army bus that took all the retards back to the downtown train station, and jumped into the next train to my dad's home in a nearby village. The thing is I took the wrong train and ended up somewhere else, still wonder where, I walked around in that other city all night, talked with mates that were in a tree for a few hours and also made friend with a stray dog that could also speak. I got back to the station in the morning after walking many miles and I made it back to my hometown. I had lost nearly everything, wallet, vest, keys even that important army paper, so I crawled to my girlfriend's apartment. She was very worried as no one had had news for me since morning before. I collapsed in her bedroom and woke up 30 hours later. Felt like shit for at least a week. I guess the dose wasn't that bad. Still a little too strong for my taste. <laughs>